Well, the world has been watching as the US housing market plummets and the media is happy to bombard you with information about it. But what no one is talking about is what you really need to know. And what does this mean for you? Well, on one hand, many of us are holding our breath and hoping that this time the Aussies won't follow in the US's footsteps. But on the other hand, politicians are reassuring us that this can't happen here because, well, we are better regulated. And in fact, they're even encouraging home buyers by increasing the first home owner's grant by seven to $14,000. So what's really going on? Well, no doubt you've heard the term subprime. And this has given us a reason for the US disaster. But what does that actually mean? Well, subprime lending is basically handing out loans to people who for a variety of reasons are a much higher risk. It's called subprime because these people are obviously not prime candidates. In fact, some of them are downright risky because of things like low incomes or unsteady wages, poor credit ratings, and little if any, collateral. So why won't it happen in Australia? Well, as the politicians keep saying, we are heavily regulated. Basically, before most of the loans in Australia can be approved, banks and potential borrowers have to undergo a rigorous examination. The person applying has to be thoroughly checked out to make absolutely certain of four things. One, that they can comfortably afford the repayments, not only at the interest rates that they will pay at the start, but at a considerably higher interest rates too, so that if interest rates rise, they will be okay. Two, that their income is genuine as tough as nails, meaning verified, steady, and ongoing. Three, making the repayments, making sure that they have enough household income for all the other living expenses. And four, that they don't have a history of credit problems that are, well, unexplainable. So you can see that most Australian loans are miles away from subprime. There is a place for responsible subprime mortgages though, like for the self-employed who can't provide the current year's financial details. And this does happen in Australia with what's called low doc loans. However, they are a very small percentage of mortgages. And uh, if you consider the US, 25% of mortgages in the US were subprime. So what about borrowing 100% of the property value? Is that risky? In Australia, the answer is no. Because of the regulations mentioned before, the risk is minimised. A dead giveaway is that the respected banks in Australia offer 100% loans at the same rate packages and features of those with huge deposits, such as 50%. If the risk was higher, the banks would definitely charge more for the 100% loans to protect themselves. So let's face it, if you can meet the repayments for 20 years, then you are most likely be able to do it for 25, 30. The biggest risk about taking a 100% loan in Australia is that if the value of the property drops, you might end up with what's called negative equity, which is a way of saying that the amount that you owe is greater than what the house is worth. However, apart from a few select pockets throughout Australia, like some of the suburbs in West Sydney, for example, there is no real suggestion that property values are likely to fall, particularly in the South Australian market. In fact, with affordable housing, the falling interest rates, and the benefits of the spending by the defence and the mining industries that are yet to be felt, South Australia is looking quite like a good place to buy. And most indicators point towards property values continuing to increase. Maybe at a lower level than in the last few years, but still enough to create positive equity for the 100% loan borrower. So a 100% loan simply gives the home buyer a chance to enter the market without the need to chase a moving target. When I say moving target, it's because property values tend to increase at a similar or higher rate than most people can actually save for funds. For example, if you save for five years to get that 20% deposit, you may find that the property value has increased, so you actually need another 10%. And you would have probably paid rent in that entire period as well. On the other hand, if you've taken out a 100% loan, you would have been five years down on your repayments 
and the increasing value of your house would mean it's now worth more than what you owe on it. This is why the government has increased the First Homeowners Grant, which allows people who don't have any deposit to invest in their first home. 100% loans are not high risk, and they don't give first homeowners false hope. What they actually do is help buyers enter the market and start to build equity in what is usually an increasingly valuable asset.